It's Ash from Super Videos back for another video for The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the first image look at Major General Beale that they released. General Beale will be played by Terry O'Quinn. Speaking of which, he actually did an interview where he gave us some very interesting and huge insight into the character. We have some pretty interesting character details for Major General Beale, which we're going to break down also in this video. So stay tuned, we'll be right back to break them all down. Alright, as always, before we dive into it, smash the like button, subscribe to join our community and press the bell to be notified when I upload on the channel. With that said, let's dive right into it. We have our first look image at Major General Beale right here. Now, of course, he was shown briefly in the teaser or one of the teasers that they released. But in that one, he had a beret on and he had the whole CRM uniform with the CRM emblem and all of that. But here... It appears that he's wearing plain clothes and not his military uniform, which is interesting. But of course, we can't really make out much else from this other than the fact that it's Terry O'Quinn playing as Major General Beale. But this is not all we got. Like I said, we actually got an interview with Terry O'Quinn and he went through some very interesting details that we're going to be breaking down. The first thing that we're going to talk about is this part of what they talked about. They asked them, I know you have experience playing a military leader going all the way back to Harsh Realm. So what were the personality traits of this character that you tried to dig your claws into? Of course, Major General Beale will be the leader of the Civic Republic military. And that's why they made that comparison. And then in response, Terry O'Quinn says, I think that He's very hidden. He's a hidden guy. I've always been intrigued by characters that you don't know exactly what their agenda is, what motivates them, or how they will be motivated. And I think in my understanding of him and the way that I try to play him is somebody who will do whatever is necessary but won't be threatening about it. And that's definitely super interesting. It screams to me a psychopath who will do things that are just crazy, but he does it in the name of saving the people that he pretends to care about. It actually sounds a lot like somebody like Elizabeth Kublik, who was also part of the CRM, who obviously was arrested for treason in World Beyond, or even somebody like Pamela Milton, the leader of Commonwealth. Maybe she wasn't as psychopathic as Major General Beale appears to be, but it's definitely super similar. He continues to say he seems like a completely reasonable person and the decisions he has to make are all explicable to him. He understands why he has to what he has to do, whether some people agree with it or not. And I think that's possibly teasing at Rick disagreeing with him, like Rick being the person that disagrees with him. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I'm predicting here. And then he says, so I think personality-wise, he has a history with all of his troops and with the Civic Republic. He's sort of a military George Washington in the eyes of a lot of these people. And that actually got me thinking about saviors. Like for a lot of saviors, Negan was a god. And I feel like it's a similar type of analogy here as well. When it comes to... Terry O'Quinn saying that they see him as the George Washington of the new post-apocalyptic world. Also, he says when he starts dealing with Rick, he doesn't exactly know what to do with him or who he is or what he is. This also reminded me a lot of how Negan felt towards Rick because Negan didn't know what to do with Rick, you know? So I feel like it's a similar type of cat and mouse game between those two. And then he says... And so he plays coy with Rick a lot, which I found to be super interesting for him to say that. Anyway, and then he says, and I think there's a lot to be found out there. So Rick helps discover the heart of the man, I think. So it seems like Rick is going to try to get through to General Beale and try to make him a better person or possibly try to find his vulnerabilities so he can attack like Rick always does. 
Also, the next part of the interview that I do want to mention is one part where he's asked, did you go back and look at old episodes or did you just want to go straight in? And then he says, not really, a couple of things. We watched a lot of Daryl Dixon. So obviously when they were filming, the Daryl Dixon show was airing. So that explains why, not that they're related in any way, of course. And then he says, I sort of tend to be that person who says, tell me if I do something wrong. Tell me what I need to know because there's only so much room up here. My brain cells are in decline, so I keep the stuff I need to know. And that worked out. That was actually pretty simple because much of the work I did was with Andrew Lincoln. So he was always here to tell me stuff and to remind me of the history. That was wonderful. Now, most of that is irrelevant as far as teasing anything. The only thing that was definitely revealing to me was that he said a lot of the scenes he did was with Andrew Lincoln, who of course plays Rick. So that tells me two things. One, obviously Rick and General Beale are going to get a scene together. So that's awesome, and not just that, but they're going to get a lot of scenes together. So that definitely screams to me that they are building up some sort of rivalry between those two, and they're building up those two to be enemies, which is super awesome. The last part of the interview that I want to mention, he was asked, what can you say about him now and the character we will finally be meeting? He says he's the leader of the Civic Republic military, which we obviously know. And then he says he operates pretty independently of the Civic Republic government. We also know that because of World Beyond, they sort of revealed that there were definitely going to get more into that kind of structure as far as Civic Republic, the government, and the CRM. And then he says he doesn't really have to deal with them very much referring to the government of the Civic Republic, which makes sense. I mean, that's also something that they were teasing at in World Beyond. And then he says, he's held in high esteem. We talked about that, so I'm not going to mention it here. He's kind of a hero. He has a long military history. He served two terms in Vietnam, which is definitely super awesome. And just to remind you of something, Pope who was in the final season of the original show, also fit that type of stereotype. You know what I mean? Like that egoistic military guy who served in the army. So I feel like there's some similarities between them, not just character-wise, but also if you remember what Pope looked like, they kind of look alike as well. Anyway, and then he says he went to officer training school and he's had to make some decisions in terms of who lives and who dies and how to deal with the mass of the walking dead. Most of this kind of makes sense. We talked about it. But the last piece is the important part as well. He says he has a big army. He has about 2,000 of his frontliners. That's definitely big news. I mean, 2,000 CRM soldiers. That seems extremely dangerous for the people going against them, and it's super awesome. Obviously, CR has 200,000 people, I think, living in it. So 2,000 soldiers makes sense. I think Commonwealth has like one-third of that, if even that. So it's definitely interesting to get a perspective as far as the size of the CRM versus the size of all of the military groups we've seen so far. He also says they're his elite corps, and they do most of the work, be it dirty or not dirty, teasing that he will have a dirty side to him. He makes decisions based on what he thinks will help his community survive. And it's completely that he's trying to make sure that this city survives, referring to the Civic Republic. So he makes some tough decisions. And that's pretty much everything that I wanted to mention specifically in this video. You can go check out the interview yourself and read the entire thing. Most of the important parts we already covered in this video. But I'm definitely interested and intrigued to know your thoughts and opinions about everything we talked about. So share that in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button, subscribe to join our community, and press the bell to be notified when I upload on the channel. That's it for this video. See you next time for another super video.